Mass and weight are critical aspects of the design process, so let's take a look at how to measure those in Creo Parametric. And in this assembly, let's grab one of the steel beams and open it up. And in the part model, I notice that it doesn't have a default coordinate system. If you go to the datum drop-down menu, you have the ability to create one, and you can even reorder it above the first features. So before we calculate the mass, let's verify our set of units. And you can do that from, from File, Prepare, Model Properties. And this is such a convenient command that I recommend that you put it in the Quick Access Toolbar. And so we see that right now we are in millimeter newton seconds. If you click the Change button, you can choose from one of the other default unit systems that comes with Creo Parametric, or you could even create your own. But let's stay in millimeter newton seconds. And I will click the close button. So now that we've verified our set of units, the next thing is materials. And in the same model properties dialog box, the top line is for materials. Click the blue change hyperlink over to the right. And we have our materials dialog box. I am in Creo Parametric 5.0. So I have both the legacy materials that came with Creo Parametric in 3.0 and earlier. If I hit the back button, oops, let's go to the Granta materials that were added in Creo Parametric 4.0. And so, for example, I could choose that this is a ferrous metal, and you have a bunch of more steels in here. Let's say I choose the hard carbon steel. I can right click and assign it, and then click OK. So now that I've got my material signed, in the same dialog box you have mass properties. And this is one place to access it. In a few minutes I'll show you how to access this from the analysis tab. So let's click the change button. And in here we have the mass properties. And here we have our density in tons per cubic millimeter. If I click the calculate button, we verify that the values are up to date. And first off, if I choose generate report, this will show the same information in a text window. And you could choose file, save, and save this out if you wanted to use this information elsewhere. And you'll see that you get the volume, surface area, density, mass, the CG, the inertia tensors, moments of inertia, rotation matrices, etc., uh, radius, radius, radii of gyration. Uh, let's click the Close button. And also from the Save drop-down menu, this is another place where you could save this out to a file. So in this case, I am calculating it using geometry and density. And we see that this ends up having a mass of almost 4 tons. So let's click the OK button and close out of here. Now I'm going to take a look at a slightly different situation for mass properties. So for example, here I have this Pixhawk assembly that I used in another model. And this is a commercial off-the-shelf product. And I don't have the densities for all the different components inside of here. So rather than going to the model properties dialog box and assigning a material, when we go to the change button over here, rather than using geometry and density, you could choose geometry and parameters. And so if you actually had the density, you could fill them in. In this case here, we have the mass in tons, which really doesn't make sense. Let me cancel out of here and change my set of units. And let's use meter kilogram or millimeter kilogram seconds. And click the set button. And we are going to convert the model. Click the close button. And now for the mass properties. For the mass, here it would be in kilograms. Oops, let's change from geometry and density to geometry and parameters. And for the mass over here, I happen to know that this is 38 grams, which would be 0 0.038 kilograms. Someone correct my math if I got that wrong. 
So that way I can click OK. And I'm using an assigned mass since this is something that I would just weigh and then want to report that way. Now be aware if I go to the parameters dialog box, which you can access in a number of different manners, from this main drop down menu, you can choose reported mass properties, and this would use the values like before. And so here we have pro MP mass, which is at 0.038 that I entered in, and it calculated the other properties appropriately. Also, if you go to this drop down menu, there's the alternate mass properties and you can see there's that value that I entered in and I can change it from this location as well. Uh, you'll notice that there's this other parameter in here, pro MP source, which says that the values for the mass is coming from parameters that I am entering. Uh, for example, if I close out of here and go back to that beam that I calculated the mass for, if we go to the parameters, which I can get from the model intent overflow menu on the model tab. Here, when I change to my actually reported mass properties, uh, actually, let's go back to the alternate mass properties. You'll hear that, see here that the pro MP source is geometry. In other words, it's using the actual model to calculate the weight of the part. And the last scenario that I want to mention for mass properties, let me go to this stunt bike assembly. And here we have a little sport bike. And we have a part that is supposed to represent the center of gravity of the driver. And this is just a multicolored ball. And in this particular situation, you know that the person isn't actually a mass represented like this. So if you wanted to, you could go to the model properties and mass properties change. And then instead of geometry and density or geometry and pattern parameters, there is fully assigned. And this is where you could enter in the volume, the mass, the area, the location of the CG, and also the inertia and reporting the inertia either at the coordinate system origin or relative to the center of gravity. So that is a third method. All right, let's cancel out of here and hop back over to this window. Now let's say that we make changes to this model. We make it longer, we make it shorter. The mass obviously is going to change. So how often do the mass properties update? That's driven by a config.pro option. If I go to File and then Options, Configuration Editor, I don't have a set in my model, but let's use the Find button. I'm going to type in the keyword Mass, and there is an option called Mass Property Calculate. And that is set to By Request. In other words, when you go to either the Analysis uh, tab to calculate mass properties or go to the model properties dialog box, you'll be able to update the mass properties based on changes to geometry. That is the default value. There's also the value for automatic. In other words, every time that you regenerate, it's going to update the mass properties. Now, initially, that might sound like a good idea, but the problem with automatic is that if you've got a bunch of released components and you're calculating the mass upon every regeneration, they're going to show up as modified. You might necess not necessarily or probably don't want that. And you also have this other option that was added in Creo Parametric 4.0, I believe, for report outdatedness only, where it will end up showing up in the notification center that your values are out of date. And then you also have this option for check upon save. In other words, hey, take a look when your model is being saved and report if your mass properties are out of date. And I'm going to leave the default value by request in the model. All right, let me click the OK button. I'm not going to save that in my default config.pro since I am using the default value. All right, so we calculate the mass properties from the model properties dialog box, but you can also get to that from the analysis tab. So when I choose analysis, here we have mass properties, 
and you can click the preview button and here it's going to give us the information in this small window over here again this is about four tons and one nice thing about this dialog box is that in addition to clicking the information button for getting that text window you can also change it from quick to feature and on the feature tab you can create parameters in the model for volume surface mass inertia etc and there are a bunch of different parameters in here that you can end up generating and here we have the properties called mass we go to the uh, analysis tab over here actually it's to go back to the analysis tab here we have feature this is where you can change the name of the feature and I like to name the feature very simply let's call it mass and then click the OK button and now I have a feature called mass if I add a column to the model tree I can show feature parameters and let's type in that name mass and then OK hey here it shows me the mass in my model units and you can do this in an assembly as well if you want to keep track of the assembly's mass as well as the mass of all the individual components all right so earlier i had showed if you go to the parameters dialog box this is where you can use this drop down list to change to your alternate or your reported mass properties in this window let's also take a look at relations and because sometimes want people want to use relations uh, to create a parameter that drive that's driven by the mass of the model so in the tools tab we can go to relations in here and one thing I want to mention is that uh, for your different relations in here you have relations that can be calculated at the beginning of the regeneration cycle or after the regeneration cycle and if you have parameters that are being driven by the mass of the model you probably want to do this post regeneration so it updates with any geometry changes and so for post regeneration you might have a parameter I'm gonna write one I'm gonna call it weight one for a new parameter is equal to I'm gonna show you something that you might see in older models you might see MP underscore mass and then quotes inside of parentheses that was an old way of reporting the values of the mass and assigning it to a parameter but there's actually a new parameter that you can use let me just call this weight two, and this one is called pro underscore MP underscore mass and let's hit the verify button and that way you can see that I have two different parameters in here that were generated uh, one from the old parameter for calculating the mass and one from the new parameter in here let's do some one other thing regarding parameters and this is the eternal conundrum of dealing with mass versus weight so I've got my part over here let's change this from millimeter Newton seconds let's change this to an English set of units and I'm going to change this to the pro e default let's choose set and convert and then close and I always like to regenerate just to be sure and now when I go to my relations dialog box here we have the different weight parameters and values are updated not updated let's go to the model properties dialog box mass properties change and let's calculate there we go there we have our looks like it's about eight eighty six hundred pounds uh, mass in here so I'm going to click OK and from this dialog box we can also get to our relations as well and so let's 
us go to our post regeneration parameters and verify them and so they are updated okay so weight and mass units matter in here so uh, in this case here since my unit system was the pro e default of inch pound seconds if my density is in pounds mass per cubic inch then my pro mp mass is going to be my actual weight but to add confusion to this if i am using the ips system in which case my density is going to be in pounds force times second squared per inch to the fourth power uh, you're going to have to do something a little different so let's go and do that again this adding a little confusion here let's convert over here and then click the uh, close button and I'm gonna regenerate and let's go to our relations in here change these to post regeneration up oh, it's giving me an issue with that uh, let's go back to the model properties dialog box and go to my mass properties and let's click the calculate button okay so the mass changed because we changed our set of units and so this is the actual mass in the model looks like it is 22 pounds for second squared per inch weird set of units there all right so let's click the OK button what I need to do in this situation now from my relations dialog box let's go to post regeneration I'm going to create a parameter for gravity and in this set of units it's going to be equal to 386.4 inches per second squared and so the weight in this case here will be need to be the mass times that acceleration due to gravity assuming that I am at the surface of the earth and so here you can see that uh, in this case the weight here this is actually the mass so I should actually change that and here we have the weight of the model which is actually that 8700 pounds so just be aware of uh, how your unit system can make a difference as to whether you're actually calculating the mass or the weight. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.